Good day, there's an elephant in the room, and maybe an elephant where you live. This is Pastorpedia, Momentum Ministry Partners, but also all kinds of pastors and church leaders. When is it time to leave a church? In general, but especially for a staff member or a pastor, we want to address what I think is sometimes an elephant, and uh, is it okay at times? Do we have to find a book on God's will and say, well, God has led me? When is it okay to leave a church? Why do such thoughts come? I'm Newt Larson, Jeff Bogue, Jim Brown. Not about to leave your churches, I think, but when is it okay to think about this huge issue? Jim? Uh, you know, I read an article many years ago, actually at Grace Seminary. Uh, I graduated in 1996 from here. Grateful for it. Help me. Plug for Grace Seminary, good school, Grace Seminary. Um, <laughs> but, Jim, j not commercials, just go ahead with it. <laughs> it's a good one though. Uh, I remember a, um, a guy wrote one time, when your voice is no longer heard. Hmm. Uh, and that is such a, uh, a great statement to think through. Wow. Uh, when, you're, when you speak, it's just like wah, 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 wah. Uh, when you're in a meeting, you can see people tuning out, they're on their phones. When it used to be, they were on the edge of their seats in some form or fashion, at least being receptive to it. But if you're looking at a room and, and you're trying to guide a group of people, you're up preaching on a Sunday morning and people are no longer hearing your voice, it might be time uh, to consider uh, whether this is the place to stay. Or change your voice. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean it. I, okay, but well, let's come back to that. I, I actually was, my first response was actually along those lines. It's when, when folks aren't with you on vision. And so I, I, think, I think that's a delicate thing because um, I, I think until you're there five or six years, people don't even trust you anyways uh, to, to make changes. And so... Um, when when you are leading them and they are not buying in or they are not uh, following you and the time has passed. It, you can't feel that way in your first six months, <laughs> right? It takes time to build trust. But when the time has passed and you realize that, I think another time that it, it's, it's time to leave a church is when you realize and there has been a time window that you don't fit the culture of the community. And I think we over overlook that a lot of times, right? There, when, when I see pastors really, really thriving, they fit the culture oh, of yeah. their church, but then the greater community, oh, and so they all make sense to each absolutely. other. I think especially when we start off and we kind of get our first gig or two, um, that, that you kind of take the first thing, that the mm -hmm. first set of people who will have you, you're like, oh, I'll be yeah. with you too. And then you figure that out a little bit. A couple of things I would say, I mean, there's a list, all of us have a list, but if your passion is dry, uh, if you're like, I don't even feel like going into the office, you gotta check and see if it's depression because that's a big concern amongst pastors. But if you don't have the get up and go to get up and go anymore for that group of people or that, you, you might wanna consider that. I would say if your church has been stalled for a long time and um, moving forward, taking the gospel to the community and even I would say if there isn't, aren't indicators of new life, that would be a, a, an indicator. And, I, and then another thing I, I, I would say, if you're in a group, those you really trust, um, that keep you accountable, would agree, it might be time to consider moving on. And right. lastly, I would say, listen to your wife. Um, I, I think we underestimate the value of oneness in a marriage. And uh, my wife is in tune with the Spirit of God. And so I, I go to her for insight. If your wife doesn't even want to come anymore, it would be a crucial issue. It, <laughs> it really is. It, it is. And if you don't want to invite your next door neighbor, not because you're going to have a bad sermon, but because there's a culture there that you don't even want them to see, yeah. that would be crucial. Why is it so hard to do, uh, practically and theologically? Why is it so hard? to move. Part of it is God's will. Let me answer my own question too. In our culture, Christianity, sometimes we have to say, well, God has led me. And maybe he leads us through some of these ways. Children, 
you have children in yeah. school, you're caring for them. They're, it's challenging to, to process picking them up, moving them across the country, moving to another city. There's a family, you know, if you would look at my business card, it says husband, father, pastor. And I really, tr I've said this on many occasions, Newt and Jeff, and you've heard me say this, but if I failed as a husband and I failed as a, a father, then I failed as a pastor. So I need to take their best intentions into mind too. God has called me to, to lead them too. So those those are important things to consider. It is a divorce too. Yeah. yeah. Why is it hard? Uh, I think those things, if your kids are tied in, you're talking about shifting their schools, et cetera. Sometimes your wife has a career and she's tied there. And I think the the... One of the big things in the room that we're just not talking about is it's your job. And so it, when you think about leaving a church, you have a college degree. Most pastors have a, a master's degree, a seminary degree, and I'm going to work at Home Depot. Like that, that's hard. And so it, it's hard to think about making the, those shifts. It's hard to think about an income loss. This is your occupation, all those kind of things. I think that's, that's part of it. I also think it's hard because... I think when you think about leaving a church, it's hard to figure out sometimes, is it the people that I'm trying to lead or is it me leading them that's yeah. the problem? And it's it's very, very hard to uh, come to the conclusion that it's me leading them. So can I improve that? Can I change? Is it not clicking? Am I just not up to the task? That's a hard thing to come to. And what, we, what a lot of pastors do is they're like, this is a difficult church and the people are paying in the neck and they're the reason I can't go anywhere. I'm like, so sorting all that out is hard to, to, and, to figure out. And I think it's a good, when, that, when those emotions of weariness come, and they come. Yeah. I've been in Grace 25 years, and there have been uh, some Sundays where I was done. <laughs> I'm done. And, but doing some self-leadership, okay, this is how I'm thinking. This is how I'm feeling. This is what I think I feel. Do some self leadership. I need. I, I need to make sure my 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 spiritual life is in check. My physical. I'm eating well. Then I'll make that decision because I, I, I'm I'm concerned that many pastors make that decision when they're not running at their optimum right. and they're weary and isolated and then they regret because they heard more from themselves than they did from they the Lord. They gotta talk to somebody. Right. Another pastor, a friend, a, a coach, a teacher. I. I can't believe how many pastors are so lonely. And part of the reason, I know it can be a lonely job, is they don't reach out and talk to somebody who's got some experience in that area. When, Dude, when, most of the time when I'm ready to quit, what I actually need is a nap. And, and I'm just exhausted. How long? Uh, a, a long one, right? <laughs> At least a quarter of a football game. Usually is the way it plays out. The, the, I would say this, like a lot of pastors who want to quit see if you can get a sabbatical first because guys we we wear down to the bone and it doesn't matter if you have a small church or a big church you're soul weary and you're exhausted and you're physically spent and uh it's hard for other people to relate to that uh I really agree with what Jim's saying. Get in a cohort. We, we have these through Momentum Ministry Partners. You can check out the website. Take a class at Grace Seminary just to get some like fresh water flowing yeah. through the soul a little bit. Uh, take a couple weeks and go to church somewhere else. Get one idea. But when you're like, I think I'm done, I'm, I'm just gonna go, I always say I'm gonna go uh, live on 100 acres and be left alone the rest of my life. Two weeks later, I'm like, you know what I'm going to do instead? Conquer the world. Hey. Because you just needed your soul filled up and a little bit of rest. <laughs> you know, honestly, let's be honest. Um, I think you should leave the church before you go to the church. Uh, what I mean by that in the interview process, look at the questions the people are asking. That's one thing I had a wise mentor, Ken Bickle, told me one time. He says, Jim, before you go there, when they're asking the questions about you coming, that's the things this church is most passionate about. And then you have to answer the question, am I passionate as much about those things? Mm. Am I a good fit for those things? And so I actually went back and listened to the interview. That was 25 years ago and when I first went there. And I, 
one guy was interested in this ministry and the other pastor didn't do this and this is who we are. You'll soon find out who the church is you're going to by the questions they're asking. So listen to the questions they're asking. I get that, but it's still they need you to change them. Absolutely. And you have to answer that. Am I the guy to do that? Okay. That's what I'm, I'm saying. Maybe you're not the guy to do that. Let me ask just for a brief answer. Do some churches deserve for you to leave? Absolutely, yes. <laughs> that is a brief answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, if you, if, oh, obviously, if there's sin in your life, and I mean, that, we're not even talking about that. Maybe no, no. But there's other reasons to leave a church. But and, there are churches that will never change, absolutely. I think. I, I think so. I believe too, in Jesus. There are churches who are pastor eaters. Um, I, I think that there are pastors that God sometimes uniquely calls to break those cycles. And so you may be the guy that sheds the blood uh, that, that, that breaks the cycle. And after that, you may have to leave. So the next guy is the guy that takes it someplace. Um, I would just say come to that conclusion wisely. Uh, because when when I am tired and I am spent, I think my church deserves for me to leave. And that's actually because three people were grumpy with me. And I just didn't have the bandwidth to do that. When I get a clear head, it makes a different picture with it. So I think, yes, that is the situation. I think that is a conclusion you draw over time and slowly. I would agree. And look at the church leaders that you have helped to evolve and grow and see if they have a heart for grace and the church. And if, sometimes you're fighting for them. You're not fighting for the church. You're fighting for those seven or eight or ten people that actually committed to you. And if the church would follow that group, it would have a revival. And so you, you just have to weigh all of that. And that's where counsel and rest, and it's a big deal. Well, this is a tough subject, and we don't think we have all the answers. In fact, none of us have been very good at leaving a church. <laughs> and I say that with thanks to the church and the people that's and right. to God. And maybe that's true in your life. But if, if we can help in this area, we'd love to let us know. Mm -hmm. We're thinking about one of the toughest things about the divorce of a pastor in a church, but this divorce is not illegitimate. There are times... We hope your grace and your love for the people is growing. We'd love to help if we could. We hope you'll think about this related to Jesus Christ and how he walks with you in combination. I'm with Jeff and Jim. I'm Newt, and we thank you very much for your interest.